Well, hello there. Um, I have a Windows Forms application here in front of me, and I wanted to show it to you guys. So, I wanted to ask if you like what you see here, if you like to have gauges within the cells of the grid and have an interactive type of experience like this, rather than just any old editor. So, as I change the value in this units and stocks column, notice how this value changes upon update. So, whenever I move off to another cell and update that, the total changes on that. So you're probably wondering how I did this and it's actually not that hard thanks to a component that this video is all about called the Ultra Control Container Editor. So as as you know you can't just put any control that you want inside of WinGrid cells unless it imp implements the iProvides Embeddable Editor interface and the Ultra Control Container component essentially is that interface between your control which could be whatever control you want and the wind grid so think of it as a generic provider for iProvides Embeddable Editor where Infogistix has done all the work for you and you could just throw whatever control you want in there and this video is all about showing you how to do that so let's take a look at how this is done so I have a form here which I'm going to blow away everything on it so we can start completely from scratch so let's blow that away Let's go into the code and blow that away as well. And we get rid of everything. Let's just compile, make sure I didn't delete something important. And it should be perfect. And yep, yeah, let's just get rid of this as well. Okay, we should be good to go. So one of the things that I'm going to show you is a control that I've subclassed. So I took the gauge control and I subclassed it and I gave it a silly name. So, but it's very important to understand what this control must have or what I've done to make it work so that it's efficient. So the gauge control in itself, I've added a value property and what I'm doing is I know that the gauge presets that I will be using only have one needle and one gauge and one scale so I will basically reach in and fetch the value of whatever that needle or marker if you want to call it marker or needle you can use the same word whatever that value is and I'm returning that and when something outside of the control wants to assign a value to the needle I'm also reaching into that and assigning the incoming value and setting that to the marker so that's how we get and set values to the marker itself now, for those of you that work with WPF or Silverlight, and you're, you're very well versed in the iNotify property changed events, I'm also implementing that here. And yes, this is a Windows Forms app, and I'm implementing that here. And what I'm doing is I'm handling an event directly off the gauge. The event is called marker value changed, and it fires whenever the end user clicks and drags the needle or marker around. Whenever that happens, this event fires and when that event fires I'm firing the property changed event and this is like the typical pattern that's used to fire the property changed event and the property changed event when fired the system is notified of anything that's any basically anything that's hooked up to certain properties that you notify the system about if they're attached to and this event fires then it's sending a message saying, hey, I changed, so update yourself or do whatever it is that you're designed to do. That's what all this is about. All right, so pretty straightforward, right? So you could put something together like this fairly quickly. And again, the, the value property is important because I want it to just be a sim simple single property directly off of the gauge control that can be accessed by something else. That's the purpose of this. All right, so that's what I'm going to explain to you about the gauge control and how I set that one up. Now what we're going to do is jump to the form. So here, let me just do a build real quick and because I, because the control that I subclassed is right here, the Ultra Tom gauge, it will also show up in my toolbox immediately. So let's that's the one I'm going to be using. So to get started, I need some data. So how about we go and grab the products table from the Northman database and I'm just going to keep it simple and drag and drop the entity directly on here so I have a, the Infragistics WinGrid instance. So I'm going to set a few properties on here. Let's set the doc to fill. I'm going to set the 
V style to be flat single band. I don't want the hierarchy in this case. And then what I'm going to do is go to the Net Advantage Windows Forms toolbox. I'm going to find the Ultra Control Container Editor. Let's double click on that twice because I want two of them on here because I'm going to be doing some cool stuff and I need two of them. I'm going to essentially hook one of these guys up to the let's hook it up to the unit price and one gets hooked up to units in stock so that's what I'm going to do so unit price units in stock so I'm going to just rename this so that way it makes sense once it starts getting filled up with a bunch of controls make this bigger so we can all see so number one is units in or unit price unit price and then this one is units in stock great so these are both on the form and now here's what the, where the magic happens so let's click on this for now and what you do is you want to click on the smart tag there's other properties you could set on here but the ones that will get you up and running are these two properties right here now here's a decision you have to make do you want to use whatever it is that you're using as a control as read-only to display or do you want to do it as an input control or you want to have both so this is what these properties mean so the rendering control property off of the ultra control container editor allows you to choose a control that it will be used for painting the number in whatever way it is that that control renders then you need to hook it up to another control that will be used as the editor control so let's say if the end user wants to do something and click and change your control so that way you can take that controls new value and stuff it into the grid cell that's the control you want to hook up here now here's something very important if I throw that gauge down onto the form I can't hook both of these up into the same thing over here because what happens is it's not going to let you do that it'll throw an exception and you don't want to do that you can use the same type of control but you have to um, have two separate instances alright so let's do that let's start putting some of these controls on here so what I'm going to do is go and get my subclass gauge so let's throw that onto the form now I didn't set up any code in my subclass version to like apply a preset or set properties for appearance I didn't do that I'm just going to load a preset directly because the only thing I care about is having value property and, and I notify property change stuff going on in there. So I'm going to choose a preset and I'm going to go for a couple of different styles that we have here. It's great to get started with one of these presets because we give you a lot of them. Then you can customize them further. So how about we go to this one right here. I'm going to grab that one and click OK and apply and close so it's on the form now right so what I'm going to do is I'm, I need two of these guys so let's just make it a little smaller because this instance does not get shown at runtime so click on that control C control V on the second gauge I'm going to do something a little different so let's jump back into the designer and I'm going to set a property on here or actually I could have just set it here I want to show you how you can get to that through the property window so you want to go to the gauge dot gauges collection click that little editor then click on the gauge the one and only one gauge that's in there go to the scales find that one click it then go to the markers collection click that and launch this click on that one needle and find the allow drag property and set it to true because on this preset you're, you're not able to drag pro the uh, actual needles so that's why you have to go and do that alright so let's scroll a little bit down here and go get the unit price control container editor click on its smart tag and now the rendering control is ultra gauge one and the rendering control I mean, the uh, editing control is ultra gauge two now if I click on this drop down it'll give you some properties that could be set as default 
properties that will be observed, but we want to do the value property. So here's a trick. You can definitely explicitly type this in, value. That's the property that is going to be looked on at on your control to go get the value and set the value. So you could type them in explicitly. Or if you leave it out, what Infogistics has done was that it'll attempt to locate a value property on your control and grab and set the values on that property. So I want to show you that that will work as well. But you can explicitly type it in there. So it looks like we're all set up for this. And we could also set up the other Let's also set up the other control container editor. Let's just make a little bit more room here so we can see it. What I'll do now again, go back to the Ultra Tom gauge, throw another one on here, and then I'll choose a different preset here. So once this loads up, we will choose the preset, and this time I'm going to go grab one of those black gauges. Those are cool. And let's see, I want to grab this one right here. This one is only going to be read only, and that's it. So apply and close. And let's make it a little smaller so we don't really get it in our way. And that's it, no properties get touched on that one. There actually, I just realized I needed to, I just need to change the names of these. I actually wanted to hook this one up to units in stock. So let's just bear with me, sorry because I needed to, I wanted to put a gauge in one column and then the other. So what I want to do is the gauges will end up going in units in stock and units on order. So this one is units on order. And this one is units in stock. Okay, that makes sense because you know, I don't want I want to put gauges in here and in there. Okay, now we're good to go. Then I just need to hook up the rendering control only to Ultra Time Gauge Three, and that's it. Nothing else. Now let's go and set some properties on WinGrid. And while we're at it, I'm going to go grab a Calc Manager component instance from the Net Advantage toolbox. So Ultra Calc Manager, let's double click on that and we'll get that on the component area because I'm going to do some work with that, just very simple work with that. So click on the Start button on WinGrid and then we go to the Products band, click on Columns and let's hide some of these to just get some of these out of the way. I don't care about Discontinued. Reorder Level, we could hide that one, I'm not using it. And we could get rid of so these two guys as well. Okay, so we're all done. Now what we want to do is let's go to units in stock and locate the editor component property. And we set that one to the units in stock control container editor. And let's do the same thing for units on order and we'll set it to the other control container editor. Okay, apply. And let's do a few other things. So let's go units in stock, units on order. Those will both receive the gauge. Let's go to the min width and max width. Set that to 250. So that way I don't have to like resize the columns and, and resize the rows. I need to set the row height as well. And let's see, min width, 250. When you set these two properties, the column will be sized and it can't, it can't be moved or changed from that size. So we do that. Let's add an unbound column. So I want to add a total column. And let's give it a key here. Let's call it total. Total inventory. Let's go to the format property and type in the letter C and the formula property let's click on that because I have the calc engine on the form I'm actually able to do this so what I want to do is I want to take unit price times units in stock so I figured unit price times the value of the inventory or something like that just to play around with changing numbers okay click on apply. Next thing I'm going to do is click on the band zero products and then locate the override property. Expand that. 
you can do this on the grid and then it'll be applied to all bands but I figured since I'm here let's just click on that we're gonna do row height min row height that's what I was looking for and we'll set that to 250 as well so it's like a square 250 by 250 okay so we're good to go now let's run this and see what we get alright so it loads up let's maximize it so we have our sizes are set up correctly we have our gauges in there as I scroll down just want to double check that the value property is definitely being assigned to from the units in stock value so you see as I scroll down the gauges change this gauge change so we're good there so now let's go up back to the top and let's try to change the value so I click on this and let's scroll it over does the total inventory update yes it does so it updates so that's how you set this up see I mean it looks cool and everything right but once you see the secret on how this is done you know it works very well now the other thing I wanted to tell you was that if you wanted to you could um, have a toolbar in here that when you click on a save or something you could do something like this so I'll show you I'll add that real quick because it's worth showing you double click on this we should already have an event handler and what I want to do is show you some code that you'll write so so we're going to go to the where is it products ultra grid dot perform action and then action dot exit edit mode so we want to first call that and the next thing we want to do is this dot ultra grid dot update data we're going to call that one so what that does is if you're in a cell and you do not leave that cell you still have input focus it will first of all exit edit mode as if you hit enter or moved off then update data pushes the value of whatever cell you're in into the underlying object model of your data model so let's run it again and see how that works okay so I change the value here and let's see click this and see how it all updates without me having to click onto another cell because that's a little awkward if I do this whatever you know, if I do that you want to press save it'll update everything so that's how you achieve that okay so I hope you got some positive information out of this video and I hope that you've learned something good that you can use in your Windows Forms apps there are a lot of Windows Forms apps out there and you know there's some people that are thinking of moving over to other uh, technologies some people have moved over already to you know either like web based or you know Silverlight WPF or ASP.NET or you know jQuery stuff so remember Infragistics has all the tools for you to do that in any of these technologies definitely but I also want to let you know that you have your Windows Forms apps out there and you want to infragisticize them and you know add this type of functionality you've seen all the tools that we have for Windows Forms so make sure you take a look over your app, see where you can use this type of functionality and make it happen. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.